Hey, how's it going? Thought I'd test out the new microphone by trying to make another video. Um, I don't think anybody really saw the spawn video anyway, so eh, might as well go ahead and do some commentary stuff for it. So uh, right off the bat here, um, I got most of the flats and stuff laid out. I don't think anybody really wants to see that kind of boring part of the process. Uh, so going into some background colors here, which, you know, everything sits on top of the background. So that's, that's kind of important to have that established first. It's one of those things I tend to forget about and was really bad about early on. Um, and these colors I just straight up stole from a shot in Event Horizon. Reference is good like that, especially if you're having trouble with the whole, you know, blank canvas syndrome or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've never felt like that was much of a problem for me. Uh, I don't, I still don't really think my colors are all that great, but it, I think like having studied lighting and color so much, it makes it easy for me to just start off. I mean, really, you just that whole thing they tell you about just get something on the page. It really is true. And especially with digital, you can change that later on. But yeah, so those those two blues were taken from the very first shot in Event Horizon where they're on the ship and or well, I guess, you know, nobody's really on the ship, but <laughs> a dead body. Uh, floating in space and there's a blue background behind it um, all the rest of the colors are just things off the top of my head so trying to deal with the old classic problem of what do you do with black and white colors to make them like interesting looking is something i still struggle with um, typically with the black colors i tend to go for like the old school comic book uh, make it blue you know like venom um, which is funny because I hated that when I was younger. Uh, it used to really bother me that the way they would do Venom like that. So, but yeah, uh, colors I'm adding here in the background, uh, again, off the top of my head, just based on what was already there. Um, I think I was just taking that same brighter blue and blending it in a little bit. And the orange and yellow colors are just off the top of my head stuff, you know, just contrasting colors. Um you're doing of course the glowing eyes you got to have glowing eyes for spawn i mean that green is the really the heart of the color scheme i mean you've got like two different complementaries going on in, like two different sets of them at the same time i don't know if that works maybe there's something wrong with me but uh you've got the old classic uh tried and true orange and blue in the background and then we've got uh the christmas color scheme that everybody hates is uh, red and green on top of each other here. It really worked well for Spawn. Uh, they were able to pull it off without a or like Christmassy feel. Uh, I still feel like I have trouble escaping that. Maybe I'm using like two primary of a uh, red and green to to do that. Um, but then you run the risk of getting like too tertiary when you start trying to like play schemes off of uh, secondaries and things like that with each other. I mean, most of the time, really, it's kind of a natural thing for me. I don't like sit there and pick out, uh, you know, a color gamut or anything like that. I've studied all of those methods, but they feel really restrictive to me. And I also like it messes with my sense of color. Like I just, I don't like the way it restricts things. I really would much rather just be like, this is what color it makes sense in my head and then try to make adjustments from there. Uh, so yeah, starting to work on some of the like wet-ish highlights because I feel like Spawn should be kind of liquid looking like the way that Venom is, um, or also that Venom should look. Uh, that was another reason why I used to dislike a lot of Venoms that people would draw or paint back in the days because they didn't make him look like he was actually wet. Um, and I think McFarlane had the same idea that I do because when you watch the, all the film adaptations of it, he's a wet liquid kind of deal. Um, especially in the new one. I just saw the trailer for the new Venom uh, a couple of days, maybe actually yesterday or two days ago. Anyway, so I, I think it's still fairly new. And then, of course, we've got the new Alien trailer, which will be uh Alien film made by Disney. Just let that sink in a little bit. Um, I don't know. There's no way it's going to be a good thing. I mean, and, and hell, I actually liked the last Alien my brain is not remembering what uh, the title is, though. Um, oh, and sorry, by the way, we're, we're kind of going raw here with no pop filter. I just bought this microphone, so sorry. I'm trying not to breathe and laugh into the mic. Um, I've got the uh, old tried and true noise gate, the blocker. <laughs> the the uh, noise gate who cannot be named as its true title is fairly filthy, but man, it is a fantastic noise gate. I mean, the noise gate in Reaper might actually be better but i don't know so anyway not to digress away from the venom and wet symbiotes and stuff like that because i mean let, let's be real spawn is he's venom 
like as far as uh his, his outfit and the living suit and all that now in a lot of ways he's very different of course it's i mean the whole story about hell and everything couldn't be too much different however it is still in its i feel like it's almost like venom starring in dante's inferno right so like venom goes to hell and he tries to get back his family and his wife and um i mean people have been doing that whole thing for oh my god so long um almost caught me uh saying tried and true again and trying not to be so redundant this time i'm um, like uh listening back to the last video i said uh in the future way way too many times i was like oh yeah i guess i mean yeah it was it was relevant to the subject matter but um and then i'm just noticing some symmetry issues that i don't know if i saw when i originally painted this i don't know if i'm going to fix them at some point in the video i feel like i did i'm almost sure that i did because it's like really bothering my eye right now the uh the white detail on his chest on his right side our left side um is very clearly off and like really really badly um so i really hope i fix that later on in this i guess we'll see uh that's the thing about painting for hours and hours and hours. You forget exactly what you did. And that's why it's so disconcerting when you lose your work, you know, like a power outage or whatever, your shit crashes. I've heard so many people talk about Photoshop crashing. I think in the 15 years I've been using it, Photoshop might have crashed like four times ever. Um, and sometimes it's because I was doing stupid shit on a crappy computer that I really had no, you know, business doing. So, um, oh no, I said bad word. I'm not going to be monetized now. Uh, um, but yeah, so I mean, like this, uh, but like using like these classic stories, that's something I was even taught in, in some classes and stuff that I took, uh, like basically taking Shakespeare and things like that and just changing all the characters into something different. I don't really agree with that concept. I mean, yeah, everything's been done already. Nothing's really new. Um, it's a hard thing to escape because it's the inventor's problem or like what I like to call it the inventor's problem because as time goes by more and more things get invented more and more things get done so as, as history marches on originality becomes more difficult and it's especially bad for scientists engineers and you know um, inventors and people like that because they're those are fields where it's harder to advance in like you know you might you might have it come up with a new and original art style faster and easier than a scientist is going to break new ground in some kind of field and being a scientist is a really unforgiving thing like unfulfilling for a lot of people i think because it doesn't doesn't pay well and you don't get any kind of real fame you might get some respect from your peers but more than likely you will spend most of your life working on a theorem that we, you really don't know is ever going to pan out and probably won't if history has you know been any indicator so far um still want to point out that einstein's uh, theory of relativity is still a theory um and the fact that really quantum physics is kind of like burning down right now because there's been a bunch of scientists coming out and saying hey uh, most of what you know of quantum physics is absolute nonsense and there are some guys who are highly respected at the top of the field and they're so big that if anybody goes against them it will destroy their career so no but for years nobody has been speaking out that like all of our science is just nonsense it's kind of crazy like and keep in mind that's not my accusation i'm not trying to be one of those um like fruitcake armchair uh physicists like uh, uh terrence howard which uh it's kind of funny that's coming to light again i guess because of the joe rogan uh interview but i mean i've known about terrence howard and his weird crazy nonsense for quite some time anyway though oh uh, here we go I'm, I'm fixing it i'm fixing it yeah i mean i just I, I couldn't let that go it was too bad way 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 too egregious so i'm guessing here i've like cl either clipped it to or maybe probably just selected the body so that i could just really move it and luckily uh, uh perspective allowed me to kind of still use the same one i had to repaint a little bit of it um it's it's still a little off i'll be honest like i can see right now where it's the perspective isn't quite right but oh well um, so this would probably be a good time to mention the thing I was talking about in the last video where I tend to jump around to different areas instead of actually just doing passes. I will do passes in the beginning, as you probably already saw. You're going to do a Lambert pass. and you, I mean, everybody's going to do a Lambert pass. That's pretty much like the very beginning thing to do. 
Um, the occlusion passes definitely. Um, you don't necessarily need to feel like you want to have to do occlusion passes. You can kind of knock them out with your other stuff. I mean, it all depends on your method. Like if you keep them, if you're just doing like a general shadow layer and your occlusions are part of your shadows and just whatever, stop when it gets as dark as you need it to be. That's really is, is what occlusions are. You know, there's no like, I mean, there's the Loomis halfway to black method, which is a, you know, we use formulas so that we can get in the ballpark and then break them basically. Um, so, you know, when Loomis was saying halfway to black, like that's supposed to be like the average shadow. Of course, there's stuff that goes below that. And then you've got your exposure beyond that. So like when I'm standing outside and I'm looking off into the forest and I can see where it's like super dark shadows. And then I kind of look at them in comparison to other shadows around me and go, OK, well, hang on a second. Maybe this isn't actually as dark as I thought it was. Um, exposure can trick you like that, like over and under exposure have a quality to them where they tend to take out detail so something that had a bunch of details in it will now become a flat just a flat plane and surface and as realistic painters are trying to be semi-realistic whatever um you tend to think of that as like the opposite of what you're supposed to do like how could putting in more detail make it worse or look less realistic yeah so like um, but and it's really hard for me especially to do that that's one of the things i plan to try to like work on soon is to get better about understanding the exposure and when to just flatten out a value especially for backgrounds and atmospheric perspective so i'm looking out there i can see these super dark shadows are thinking that maybe they're like the darkest value i can see out there in front of me and look out into something that has you know is further away with atmospheric perspective and be able to see the fact that wait no this is actually having the exact same quality but it's much lighter than the one that appears to be the darkest thing out there in front of me and so like i mean some stuff even looks like it might actually be like clipping black uh if you're unfamiliar with the terminology of clipping it happens with sounds and visual and all kinds of other things but basically clipping is what causes that flattening out you hit a point where it goes anything above this or anything below this particular point is going to be it's just going to all become the same, right? So, like, we're, of course, we're not talking about the same kind of clipping in video games where you pass through walls and stuff like that. Um, your values will just basically flatten out. And for a long time, I had the misunderstanding that that point always happens to 100%, by which I mean, like, once something clips, it hits, you know, pure bright white, which is not how it works at all. Um, I still am not 100% exactly how that works. Um, I'll have to study into it a little more. I think basically, like, there's probably just kind of like a a set of degrees where like if it crosses this line it hits this place and kind of stays there um, i'm nowhere near sure about that though but anyway point being is that i've seen clipping where the the clipping didn't hit pure white or you know reverse the other like dark clipping under exposure clipping didn't happen to pure black either um, so yeah, anyway, it'll probably just take a lot of study and try to like understand the ranges. I think what I was planning to try to do was to um, intentionally find a reference that is very, very specific uh, exposures and focal lengths and things like that and kind of get to know the properties of those things. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess I probably should actually talk some about the painting itself. And here we're kind of like hitting some burnt highlights, like just, well, I guess that's a good point since we were already talking about exposure. Um, I didn't feel like the highlights, the metallic highlights on these chains were really bright enough. So I'm kind of burning them out where they're doing exactly what I was just talking about. We're hitting, uh, you know, a completely flat value in the center. I'm adding a little bit of refractive highlights on the cloth here because cloth really does get highlights, but it's a weird sort of a highlight. It's very subtle. And if you don't blend it extremely, extremely softly, it'll come off weird looking. And honestly, I'm probably even still hitting that zone myself. Like, I feel like it's a little too bright on that bracelet. Bracelets, you want to feel like they're a little harder material, though, maybe something like leather. So honestly, I probably could have gotten away with a much, much brighter uh, highlight on that. But for things like what I'm going to do on the cloth and the cape here later, um, even though technically, yes, I know the cloth is not, or bleh, the cape is not a cloth material, 
as we said earlier, it technically is a symbiote, but I had, don't remember ever seeing any versions of Spawn where they render the cloth parts of him as being like super shiny wet. I just want the black and white parts of him to look that way. And adding a little bit of Fresnel effect in here for some of these, these uh, smaller planes. Again, trying to get the, the wet look. I've come to realize lately that part of the reasons why some of my values have felt off was actually not getting highlights bright enough. We get like the whole other value range where it needs to be and then have the highlights just be way too dark. Um, there's one I'm working on now. It's pretty much almost done, but it was just, I mean, it had bothered me a lot. I, again, if you watch the other video, which I seriously doubt you did, I think I'm the only person that watched it quality controlling. But yeah, you can't expect, I mean, dude, it's the YouTube. Like, it takes people 10 years to build up a channel, and I don't really even care if this does anything. But um, it, it's more of just a hobby thing and, and get something out there, I guess, right? Just really just trying to get more commissions and work and stuff. But um, So yeah, just... Uh, or most of the rest of this is going to be kind of like cleanup. So you say, okay, I am still working on that perspective on the outfit details. You're going to see a lot of, like I was saying before, highlight work here where um, you're just popping the highlights to get it to look a little brighter. But um, so, yeah, like realizing now that I'm not making the, the highlights bright enough, I kind of I started messing with it because it just, I don't know, it kind of clicked in my brain as I was looking at this other painting I was working on and just like, what feels off about it? Like, I like the colors, I like the rendering, uh, the drawing is so-so, eh, but what is it that keeps bothering me about this thing? Like, and it finally just kind of clicked on me. I was like, I don't think his highlights are bright enough. So I just tried it. I mean, it's Photoshop. We can try whatever the hell we want, right? Um, so I tried it and I was like, yeah, this looks great. I'm going to keep doing this. Um, if I remember correctly, I think I just did an adjustment um but i could be wrong it might be like the way that because with spawn here i didn't do an adjustment i just made an additional layer and just kept you know instead of bumping the highlights up i just put another layer of brighter highlights on top of that which kind of i feel like that just allows a little more subtle blending and it also allows me to kind of I, th I think like have a little better control of where i put um the, the burnt out highlights, because they're not really appropriate everywhere. There is a degree of highlights. They're not just, you know, this is as bright as it can get. And that's all there is. Um, a little bit of Hank Hill on that one there. Uh, <laughs> so, um, kind of starting to enter, like, what I feel like is looking a little more polished now. I mean, obviously, it still has good ways to go because this video is, like, halfway over. Um, it's a surprise even to me, but no, I, I, I mean, it's like I was saying earlier, you work on all this stuff for so long, you start to forget, you know, exactly what you did and the details and stuff like that. I mean, to me, this doesn't look like it's that different than how it looked when it was completely finished, but that, that obviously can't be the case. There is a lot of like little, I, I remember working on the uh, glowing eyes some more. I think I had some more detail to that so that it, it's kind of has more like a flowing thing because typically a spawn is I mean, from what I remember, they kind of depict him as having like almost like the energy coming from his eyes kind of like flows, like it's being blown by the wind or something like that. Um, looks like obviously here I'm kind of cleaning up on the spikes and everything. I tend to be kind of very messy with certain details like that when I first come in. And I think uh, I think another spike needs to be added. I really hope I do that as well because I can see that the... Uh, raised hand is missing a spike i feel like maybe i may have made the hand smaller too because the raised fist like that i can clearly tell that hand is way too big um so i really hope that I, also the perspective is wrong um why why does this stuff not why do we not see this when we're actually painting it oh yeah here we go i think this is oh, oh never mind i thought i was about to fix the hand size apparently not the one thing that really sucks about making stuff uh smaller is, is that like you still have to go back and clean up the larger part whereas if you just expand it it just kind of covers up the old uh mistakes underneath which is well again it's going to depend on your method uh, with my method there's certain things that are very very easy to change and there's other things that are not like my colors are super easy to change you can change almost all of them at the you know 
drop of a hat or whatever old phrase you want to use um but changing my flats and the shapes of them no that takes a tremendous amount of pain in the ass and that's why i try not to do it but um like changing that white detail of his costume that's the kind of thing where if uh like if i'm gonna be lazy about painting those are the places where i'm gonna do it but it looks so bad to have those kind of perspective mistakes so you just kind of have to have the um willpower to make yourself do it and doing things like that is really usually pretty easy if you're in one of those kind of phases where like you know they say people don't know how to end a painting and they'll just keep noodling on it forever i've never really had that problem i get bored with mine really easily sometimes working on you know two different images at the same time swapping but you know not literally simultaneously um <laughs> it would be great if you could be ambidextrous and just paint two things at the same time like one with each hand you've got a computer over here computer over here um but yeah I can see that, yeah, I remember there's a little bit of blending that needs to be done, too, on some of the cape and stuff up there. Um, I feel like the light is going to hit more than just that tiny little edge. I don't know what to call that part of the cape. Uh, the part that's the sticking up behind his head, so the one that's on, you know his right side our left and it just has that tiny little bit of light hitting it i specifically remember that i i fixed that one but um i know that is something to work on um maybe i don't think this they had any kind of kicker uh I, i've been trying for many years to get away from the old classic uh you know they call a three-point kicker light which is basically if you're not familiar it's um how you know you'll see these paintings uh value paintings that just have like a, a light source a main light source hitting them from one direction then you've got the um shadow and reflected light on one side you know bouncing back from that of course and then you've got a third light that is usually something really super colorful uh, a lot of times it's either really bright blue or like so orange you can't stand it um a lot of people that like when the early Raposa days where he was kind of doing stuff like that and then all these people copying him and stuff you saw that like way 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 too much and I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it it definitely makes like a super dramatic kind of feel but I also feel like it's an excuse to like not have to really figure out the values properly and please don't say i think i'm saying that he doesn't know his values i mean i i think i think dave was doing it for more for excitement like he obviously knows his values 10 times better than me the dude is i mean he just i don't know how in the hell he just paints all the time like he does i couldn't do it um i've got to have music and other things to do to keep me busy I'm never bored. I've got so many different hobbies and things that I've, I've always got stuff to do. Anytime somebody tells me they're bored, I'm like, oh, sorry, I cannot uh, really at all empathize with you because I've got so many things. I've got painting and got music and also with, you know, sound engineering and mixing music. So I'm busy with doing that kind of stuff, even when I'm not actually playing it. And because it's actually, it's it's pretty interesting. It's fun. I mean, when you like, it avoids a lot of really crappy stuff when you learn to do it yourself so you're not paying a outrageous amount of money to get your stuff recorded and you have no control really over how it sounds i mean you do but you don't sound gen engineers like if they if you tell them like hey i want you to do this with my guitar sound and then they think they're like thinking god no that'll sound like absolute shit they'll act like they did it and then you know you, you don't you're none the wiser like the old engineer's trick of like, uh, louder is better. So somebody will be like, hey, you know, do this with my guitar sound or do this with my drums. And they'll turn up the track like by one decibel. And that person's like, oh, yeah, sounds much better. And the engineer turns it back down again after they leave. Like, it's just a, I don't know. You're, you're avoiding all that kind of stuff when you do these yourself. But yeah, so I mean, I've, I've got manga, which I don't really read very often. Most of the time when I read, it's um, art study stuff which I really do need to do a lot more, but you know, we all are pressed for time. I have so many things, like I said, I, I can't even do all of this stuff. Playing video games, which I have been really good about not doing too much lately. Had a little short period there where I was playing quite a bit, but um, kind of gotten more away from that lately and trying to get into art stuff again. Uh, 
Uh, I've spent a lot less time uh, working on music lately as my I've got some injuries to my right hand, with, making it kind of difficult for painting and for music, but most of what I play is metal, particularly thrash stuff and uh, arthritis and getting older and all that. It gets, it gets hard to play that kind of stuff. So yeah, Anyway, though, uh, I'm a big fan of movies and stuff like that, too, which I really would like to see the new Spawn movie whenever it ever comes out in 2035 or something. After the world is burned down completely, there will be nothing but Spawn the movie. And speaking of long waited on movies uh last man standing uh wh whatever happened to last man standing uh i think lavisi sold the rights to it like 15 years ago or something and i guess the studios have just sat on it i, I don't know i honestly don't think anything will ever happen with that even now in the days of option everything which by which i mean i'm um, talking about the netflix like if you look at all the stuff that's on netflix it is all basically just the most popular books from the last five years but turned into tv shows um the only reason i'm so painfully aware of this is having worked at the bookstore um, so I used to work in the back of a bookstore bringing in shipments and stuff. So I would see literally every single book that would come into the store. Um, and yeah, so you'd see, you'd see commercials for stuff and then, uh, go, okay, I've never heard of that thing before a new show. And then a little bit later you see the book come through, which of course the book was already out a long time before that. It's just, maybe I didn't know what it was. It's kind of like, uh, your friend gets, you know, a red Tacoma and you never noticed red Tacomas before, but now that your friend has one, you notice them all the time. Like, why do I keep seeing those Toyotas? But you were already there. They were already there. You just didn't recognize them. So, um, basically anyway, though, point being, they are optioning all this stuff into TV shows. Like, I mean, the Witcher has been around so long. Why is it just now getting a TV show? I mean, you think it would have been a movie before? Um, if you didn't realize the Witcher, I think originally came out in 93, I think was when the last wish was published. Um, I, I was not personally a fan of the show. I watched about, I think three or four episodes of it and got frustrated and annoyed with it. I was like, this is, um, I don't know. It's like, is boring and the cinematography is corny and i just I, I i don't know it's it's hard for me to take fantasy and stuff like that seriously things that are too far off from our reality just come off corny to me so most sci-fi and uh, fantasy stuff and the only reason i really have ever watched any sci-fi or fantasy stuff is because of wanting to just like put it in the visual library in my brain for art stuff because you, you're i mean you're just going to be a hard being a, a professional artist and not being able to do fantasy or sci-fi stuff. Pretty sure you're going to have to do that at some point. Um, while I'm taking a second to stop rambling about off-topic subjects, I did actually fix that spike, thank God, because uh, that, that would have, I don't know, would have been pretty bad. And by the way, while we're talking about uh, the designs and stuff like that too, uh, Spawn had so many different incarnations i mean really i kept up with the comic for a long time but nowhere near as much as you know a lot of the huge fans did i mean i, I was really big into it when i was younger um i grew up in the mcfarland spider-man era and the heyday of comics it was really great actually and so i was pretty big on spawn in the early days but it had a like kind of slower release schedule and honestly by the time i became a teenager i was more interested in teenage bullshit like going out and doing stupid things uh kind of you know fell by the wayside and then i think like i remember in the early 2000s when he came out with the toy company and that started becoming popular i never really got into that but some of my friends did i had a friend who had a huge collection of spawn sorry guys i don't know what happened there um as you can see here the video got stuck jumping back and forth between a few different frames except there was a solid 10 minutes of it so i went ahead and cut that out apparently that's in the original video and i didn't realize it because i went back to check the source i thought it was just reaper having a fit or uh just completely breaking down on me there because you know this is only my second time editing something in reaper so i'm not 100 percent familiar with how that goes and yes i am somewhat used to recording music in reaper but it's not really quite the same as far as the actual vocal track itself, yes, that part is the same. But um, in terms of like editing the video along with it, it's kind of weird. I have to actually like play the video window in Reaper while I 
sit here and record and so i'm watching it in a little window and everything but anyway so during the uh glitched out part of the video as you can see i've added some bounce light into things here um looks like i'm still working on it a little bit and kind of refining and as you can see they're kind of bumping it down because it is pretty intense honestly that bounce light is probably a little too heavy but i really like the way it's hitting the mask there yep that one there um uh, to think about it i don't think i put any green bounce light in there but i guess we, we will see uh um but yeah since this is supposed to be a liquid outfit you know you're going to get a lot shinier um details and stuff so it really probably is okay to do bounce like that uh pronounced but yeah i don't know looks like some of the highlights getting fixed as well that's probably going to be a continual process throughout the entire image but yeah, I'm really glad that it wasn't Reaper that had the problem because when I was like, man, I really like this process of being able to record this way. It is somewhat familiar as like from recording music. Um, the only thing with Reaper though being that I really just can't, uh, like I don't know as much as I did about Ableton. So basically I just, you know, there's certain stuff that like I still don't know how to do that I used to be able to do in Ableton, but it was worth the switch over really reaper is a lot better it's it's got so much more possibilities and things you can do with it uh but yeah so it looks like i'm getting into some of the occlusion shadows here which was actually what i was starting to talk about when the video screwed up because it looked like i was working on some of the occlusions for the spikes there um some of course reflected light for the spikes because you're definitely going to get like a more pronounced bounce light on metallic stuff crazy about the way that looks really i guess we'll see in the finished one i haven't looked at this in a while so um yeah i guess i'm gonna have to start like checking every single moment of a video i mean because i haven't really been at this thing too seriously i don't really like have any real aspirations for this just something interesting to do um and kind of it also helps me work on my recording skills and stuff but yeah i mean i do review and you know quality control those things a lot of times if you look at my one of my videos and it's like one view that one view is me uh watching it on a different device just for quality control or like watching it on my tv just to see how it is and i'll skip around because i mean it's kind of kind of boring to sit there and watch myself paint for you know 45 minutes or whatever um a lot of these are probably going to start being more short form thing too though because as you can see apparently stitching the videos together like i did uh, cause this one to freak out and it means that i'll have to i think really like it won't even be about watching them on youtube or wherever they're posted but more about just watching like i think the the finished like i, I have most confidence in reaper doing stuff i think because it's so well uh coded and all but um i think the like using the software to stitch all the videos together is where the problem's happening because that 10 minutes of solid nonsense was actually in the original video too. I went back and watched it and I was like, holy crap. And I came back to Reaper, cut out the part that was messed up. And then when I did that, it was like there was still some left on there because it's not really easy to be super precise in Reaper unless you want to go through a lot of uh, really annoying nonsense that I just don't really uh, care to. I mean, you know, to cut out a couple of frames is really not worth the trouble to me. So, um, and also too for this one like when i'm explaining it it's kind of nice to have a couple of frames in there where you can go oh yeah that's what that's what happened so i uh, working on looks like working on some fresnel for the uh, metallics to kind of make them look more shiny and come off as metal i feel like maybe i probably should have burned out a little bit more which uh, again i might do it we'll see <laughs> this video is almost over so um don't imagine too many people even watch this but or, or stuck around for this long but yeah i mean that that makes me feel better about making this video too since I, like i was saying nobody really saw the original one and then beyond that the fact that it had that horrible error in it i guess we'll see how that goes in the future but in the time that i was fixing that part in the video uh i actually got to listen back to some of the voice and i did you know put a couple little like uh, engineer tricks on it i've got my noise gate um and i tried to ds it a little bit um i'm probably not going to spend a lot of time playing with that right now i more than likely will just get some uh kind of automated software like i was talking about in the last video like something like soothe or um i i really do think that reefer can do it but 
um, which uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Reaper has a lot of different plugins built into it for free that are made by the team that made the um, software. And one of them is called Reefer, which is uh, uh, basically what I was just talking about. It's kind of like an alternative to Sue that takes like harsh frequencies out. Problem is I don't really understand how to use it yet. So I will have to study into that. Um, and I think that'll be a really good thing. And as far as like some of the other annoying vocal stuff, like uh, I, I noticed in the other video, I was getting pretty bad about some vocal fry stuff. My allergies are bothering me a lot. So my sinuses are killing me. I'm kind of getting a little bit of sore throat from talking so much. I don't like that. But as you can see, adding some more bounce light, it looks like I put some kind of like wrinkles in the glove to give it some tension, look a little more intense, um, even though you really probably probably wouldn't happen since it's made of liquid but you have to give it a little bit of like real world uh sensibility so that it doesn't feel too novel or like weird to us but yeah it looks like it's sort of running out of time here so um, i appreciate you watching this if you did and uh maybe i'll make another one